Uh, Homer. Homer, there we are. A large tree with acute angled crotches and very tall limbs. It has numerous smaller branches forming a dense head. That looks like a dense head. So does mine though. Cropping is light to moderate and often restricted to... Oh, that's a bit crap, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, cro cropping is light to moderate, often restricted to the younger upright growth at the top of the tree. Hence the alternative name Cluster Top. <laughs> Cluster fuck. Named after the parish of Holmer near Hereford. Now widely dis so this is 1963. Now widely distributed through the West Midlands. It has many local names referring to the alleged... Uh, <laughs> alleged to the... Uh, uh, referring to the alleged diuretic and apparent properties of its peri so i guess this one is a <laughs> i guess this one is a furious purger <laughs> sorry one of the other names it was a startled cock <laughs> is that because of the diuretic effects it's, it startles your cock because you have to piss so much uh a high gravity, high acid, and medium. What? High gravity, high acid, and medium to high tannin peri. Good quality. <laughs> if, if I ever make a single variety, I'm going to call it Startle Cock. <laughs> Furious Startle Cock. Uh, oh, there's honey knob. I should have got some honey knob just for the giggles. Holmer is rare, extant but rare. <laughs> now. Crafting startle cock. Let's see if the let's see if the, <laughs> let's see if the uh, viewer count goes up <laughs> after feeding startle cock. Oh man, that's funny. <laughs> uh, how many of these did I say? Three. They're quite they're quite good. <laughs> So what was the other word? There was uh, diuretic and uh, I need to Google that word. A period? Oh, just as if. Copy. H I J K. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've never heard that word before. Homer. A parient. I'm going to have to. A parient? Jesus. Let's do with parient. A parient. I'm going to look, look up a parient. <laughs> Helps if I could type. A parient is. Uh, isn't that funny? A drug used to relieve constipation. Okay. It is a, a purgative. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I bet doing that as a single variety probably isn't uh, <laughs> isn't the smart thing to do. I mean, the effects of, of Perry as a purgative are well known. I think I only had one really bad case, and it was with Schweitzer Wasser beer, and, and yeah, that was actually frightening. They're a bit thicker, aren't they? So, Get three rootstocks out. <laughs> a peri hunt. That's really funny, I think. But it sounds like peri. Uh, three Holmer. Uh, which ones? We'll take the thicker ones again. One, two. Oh, much of a muchness. Take three. What's the point in that? I only need two more to do on to uh, 
onto the other rootstocks. <laughs> yeah, more people need to tune in to learn about uh, diuretic and aperient effects of peri. <laughs> aperient. Anyway, yeah, so those, I don't know, maybe I've developed a, a tough country constitution at, at this stage. Uh, let me put this label on the outside. Because I only had one kind of surprise effect, as I said, with Schweitzer Wasserbier and, and I suspect that it was uh, a medium. By the time it had finished, it was medium. So there was, uh, let's say, a lot of sorbitol in it. And literally within half an hour of, of uh, drinking, okay, I drank about a litre of it, I guess. That probably didn't help. I probably could have gone for a col uh, coloscopy soon after. It really cleared me out. <laughs> But since then, I haven't had that. <laughs> We've lost a viewer. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, this one's quite thin, so uh, let's go near the tip. Came for the startle cocks, but didn't uh, expect the the shits. Oh wow, this color is quite different on the wood compared to some of the other ones. It's really pale. Maybe I only I find that interesting. shouting up there. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing it onto onto Twitter. I did a bit, uh, one, one story onto Insta. So, I don't know. A lot of people said they were interested. Uh, but I think a lot of them were in America. And this is... Not exactly the right time zone for that. But they can always catch up on the recording. Yeah. I think if it was uh, without reading shit like that in the books, <laughs> you'd be pretty. You'd, you guys would have left too. stay to the top of that so I'm gonna force it to go a new tip. Don't get the label. Do 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 yeah, these are more meaty, that's more like it. here so I uh, I used to when I started grafting I was grafting kind of you know two hand widths or so like 15 to 20 centimeters from let's say ground level but I found that um, you know it's just kind of moving trees around over time uh, you know you tend to plant them a little deeper and you just don't want the ground getting too I mean I don't know what's gonna be like in uh, you know 30, 40 years after the trees are planted, what the ground level will change, because if it goes above the graft line, then maybe the the scion uh, roots itself, and then you lose all the benefits uh, of the rootstock. And in this particular case, because we're looking for resistance from against pear decline, I don't really want that to happen. Okay. Uh, where do we go with this one? Uh, right here. You fucking stay there. Try and make this one a bit longer, shall we? Not that fucking long. Stay there. Ah, it's really interesting. 
interesting color wood actually I mentioned the inside is really pale ah and what you can see here is uh, so it wasn't kept quite moist enough and you can see where it was cut it started uh, forming scar tissue already uh, around the uh, the cambium there so that's a really good sign that uh, yeah it's the cambium that does all the action it's kind of oozing stuff out to to try and uh, to try and heal but yeah it's really interesting kind of olive green and blotchy it's a nice color juicy thick cambium this is gonna be fun it's much thicker cambium than on the uh, on the rootstock okay so you can uh, get a matching long cut on this oh, fucking hit the butt of course can't I thought I heard the cat. Okay. Okay, that's good. This is a really long one. About a third of the way down again, so it's kind of just a rule of thumb. It seems to work. Try and keep the tongue as thin as I can. I went a little bit deeper, but that's okay. Oh, pretty good actually. It wasn't too deep. And I was inside. I don't know why she doesn't come out actually. Cause normally, for sitting outside, she she likes to sit around, keep us company. Pancake doesn't give a shit, so I'm not sure where she is. I think she's probably sleeping inside. So that's that's a nice one. It's uh, quite long. I mean, this is the the span of the, of the graft. So there's masses of cambium contact uh, all the way along, and it will give a really solid uh, foundation. And it might come out. <coughs> She's probably wondering why I'm sitting here talking to myself though. It's funny, yeah. She loves being outside. So going for a walk, she just absolutely loves being out and about. But she doesn't hang out in the garden as much. You know, she likes being where we are. And if we're inside, she likes to stay inside. Oh, okay, and this, that is the growing tip still there, so I think I'll leave that as it is. I'm pretty happy with that one. Just need to leave it. Actually, more people would watch if, uh, if Anna was featured, I guess. Three. All right. We do something more interesting. Try a. Uh, I don't mean drink Perry. Uh, let's do a dead graft. So <coughs> this rootstock is pretty hefty. Uh, I don't know. Can you see the thickness difference? So it can be a bit tricky because uh, you can do an offset wedge. I'm not a fan of that though, I just don't like it. Uh, so I'll do the Z graph just for shits and giggles, because I like doing it. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking for a spot. So this has a lot of buds, but I'm looking for a nice length where there, where I can kind of cut a strip down and there isn't too much bud action. So I'm going to take it off here. And yeah, this is where it looks a bit like schnitzel <laughs> where you're kind of just like carving or something so i'm just going to take a f like a 45 degree angle off the tip oh this is breaking solid stuff there we go there we go so it's about a 45 degree angle off the tip i mean if you're doing this this isn't for doing a uh a, a whip and tongue this just wouldn't be stable at all but uh It'll all make sense in a moment. Um, 
on this side. I'm going to do the same on the Scion. Yeah, I'm looking for a strip where there's no buds because I'm going to peel back uh, some of the bark off that. So I'm going to take it off just above that bud. And again, I read a 45 degree angle. Perfect. <coughs> Let's go closer. Because this is a this is a fiddly one. Um, so I've got this 45 degree angle, more or less there, and then I'm gonna actually I'll do this one first. Uh, same same thing. So at the tip of the 45 degree angle, I'm gonna just go in just below the cambium and try and keep a consistent thickness of this strip. So it's like a, a flap there, yeah. Just gonna straighten off that. Okay, perfect. So I've got my forty-five degree angle, and then the uh, the kind of flap at the end of it. And then what I want to do is uh, cut uh, a layer of the scion part again at the tip of the forty-five degree angle with. Uh, if I can, the same same thickness uh, as uh, the strip I took off there. So I can afford to go in a bit deeper on it. And around the same depth, let's see. And that means when I stick these together like that, you see they, they splay out like that. And that's the Z graft. So I want to get the tip of the uh, uh, rootstock into the, the kind of the snug here, and this has to match as well. So I can go deeper on the scion, just a couple of millimeters, just a little bit, so that the, when they're slipped together, you've got a perfectly snug fit at the tip here and the tip there. And this means uh, you've got really nice cambium contact on both sides. And if you can see this here, it's perfect. They, they line up perfectly on both sides. And you get the bonus that this kind of flap of uh, cambium that's uh, sticking out here touches at the, the end under here. So you get like uh, contact along the full sides and you get a little bit on the tip here and the tip here so that when this grows, uh, it, it grows as one. It, it's, I just, I don't know, I really like this graft. It's a little bit tricky to do. Um, I think the, the whip and tongue is really fast and easy to do. But with practice, this this is really practical. As I say, um, it was a scenario where the uh, rootstock and uh, scion thickness are, you know, vastly different. It's a, it's a real advantage. So it was last year I tried it first, posted it on Twitter to see if anybody knew about it. Um, and most people seem to be quite surprised by it. Binding it can be a little bit tricky though. Trying to keep those uh, trying to keep those flaps centered. There you go. Once you get the first layer on. So it looks kind of ugly because you've got this kind of, uh, you know, offset, this kind of bump, <laughs> jump. But once it starts growing, that rounds out. So I, I posted a picture on Twitter yesterday or the day before. Maybe it was yesterday, not the day before. And um, yeah, so it's just, so once they start growing, the bond is brilliant. So I really, really like that graft. And it's strangely very stable. 